Hi, and welcome again to What's Going On Here. I'm Bob Benton. The first thing I'm going to start off with this postcard. On the back it says, Dear Arnold, Maggie wants you to answer her letter. Gertrude, you better do it quick, see? And that's what it is. Well, we're here with Peg Barcombe again to talk about pictures, the Village of Rouses Point, the histories, and uh, the interesting things that she can tell us about these pictures. And Peg, welcome back again. for uh, This is our third segment that we have done on these, and uh, we hope you're enjoying these, and uh, Peg's uh, inventory has no limits. <laughs> well, this is one of the fairies. Now, of course, we had a lot of fairies. Um, I don't know just where this one went, but we had a ferry that went from the end of Champlain Street over to Windmill Point, and we had one down on Montgomery Street from Earl Merchants across to the Alberg Shore, uh, west of the railroad bridge, and we had, the last one we had was um, at the corner of Rose Avenue, where Barcombe's Marina is, across to the shore in Vermont. So, we and then, of course, Jacques Rouse had the first one. So we've yeah. had a lot of ferries, but yeah. that was the only way you could get over there. you got to remember, there was, that's right, there was no bridge. No bridge. And also, you'll notice there were horses on this, on this ferry going across. Mm -hmm. uh, published by Frank uh, Party, mm -hmm. Rouse's Point, New York, and, made, and printed in Germany. And another ferry. That's, that's one of the ones that went across from in front of Earl Merchant's house on Montgomery Street over to the Vermont shore. Um, that, the rudder man on there was my uncle. That was a picture, a postcard my mother had, and I had it blown up. Make sure you didn't have too big a waves on, a, on this kind of a ferry there's a, boat There's here. a horse and buggy, I believe, on that one. Um, it must have been to get a horse to go across. No, the horse was on the first one. But anyway, to have a horse on there, it must have been a little bit nerve-wracking for him. Yeah, now here's a horse lift. Now that's Mrs. Frank Party standing up. Now that's just a nice old car. I, I don't know anything about cars, but... Right. Interesting picture. Now that is Alec Laundry, and... Uh, that's the, the, all right, Alec Laundrie had a saloon on, Mon, on State Street. See, Montgomery and State changes right at the State Dock. It's Montgomery, the State Dock, and then it's State. So right. right in the middle of a street, the, the name changes. But it did. Well, he had a saloon there, and it burned. And uh, after it burned, he rebuilt a grocery store, and that was his grocery store. Now this says here in the back, the theater upstairs? Yes, there was a theater upstairs, and uh, it cost 10 cents to go, and it was, of course, like slides. It was still pictures, and uh, Margaret Bertrand played the piano, and um, uh, George Laundrie owned the, the, they called it a theater, he owned it, and he would read uh, what would go along with the pictures, and if there was music, she would play it and you paid 10 cents to go. Now, but, Alec Laundry was Harold's father? And, no, 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 an uncle. uncle. Will Laundry was Harold's okay. father. Okay, now, Alec, they also had a pool hall down in this area of State Street, too, at one time. Not the Laundry. No, not the Laundry? No, that was the Thijash. Okay, well. Uh, that was right across the road from this building, and that was uh, the two Thijash brothers, Phil and Jim. Uh, one of them committed suicide by drowning, and the other one hung himself in the building. Now this is the laundry block before it burned. Right, this is this oh. is uh, right behind the Holland House. Okay. Uh, that long, it's Menard's apartments now. And it's the same building been it's, rebuilt. Yes, yes. And when it rebuilt, he had it as a grocery store. Now mm -hmm. when it was the the fire was there and that burned, um, a tailor shop burned going down towards the state dock. There was a tailor shop and there was a restaurant and there was an undertaken parlor. They all went out at the same time, right up to Pete Natupski's house. And even his house was scorched from that fire. Now that's a picture of the fire, well, after it's gone. That was what was the, the yeah. ashes after the, the whole fire was finished. Remember, this is where you're going north on Lake Street. You turn right at the Holland, and it would be down uh, maybe 300 feet on your yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. Now, in the cellar of that building, while it was a saloon, they bottled uh, Pap's Blue Ribbon uh, ale in the cellar. There was huge, great big vats down in there. Uh, uh, memorabilia, uh, again, a small pamphlet yeah. with the name on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And uh, some... Sold by, uh, by Laundry Brothers. Yeah, and the Laundry Brothers was 
Harold's father, Will, and Alec. They owned most of the Main Street, didn't they, yes. they the Landry's? Well, uh, Lake Street, there Will you know. Landry's family Will. had an awful lot of real estate. Alec didn't too much, but uh, Will Landry did. It's Alec's daughter that owns the big stone store that we looked at at the end of mm -hmm. Champlain Street. Now, this was just a price list, again, of the Landry's. Um, people that know liquor prices probably would enjoy looking at the prices. Yeah, right? uh, now... Uh, Peg don't have this because she's interested in saving things on liquor, but because it says Rouse's Point on yes. the front, and it's an advertising that was put out. Bottle lager beer uh, per case, three fifty. <laughs> uh, favorite brands: Carlisle. Let's see, Hazelwood. I don't know. I can, uh, Canadian Club, a dollar and a quarter uh, for bonded whiskey, and uh, per bottle of Scotch whiskey, black and white, dollar fifty. Now this was the uh, tercentenary of Champlain in 1909, and these Indians came to the shore in Ross's Point in canoes, and uh, some of them were not Indians. Um, the school kids took part in that too, and the mothers would take coffee grounds and uh, boil them and get the, the liquid that would be brown, and they would uh, put long underwear in that water to make them brown, and the kids wore that to look like they were an Indian. <laughs> Now, this point. Another one. Now, here is that that's 1909 celebration. Yeah, that's the program. The for program it. for it here, and uh, that's the front of the program. And on the back, I'll just show you. They're in plastic here. There may be some reflections. We could take them out. I uh, no, we won't. But then here it shows the motor races, motorboat races by various lengths of your motorboat. And it mentioned on the other, the Indian pageant, and the uh, the program for the and it's things that. Like this that people keep. If you've got some of these and you're even thinking of throwing them away, don't throw them away. Talk to Peg, talk to myself, talk to anybody. No, we're not gonna necessarily going to buy them. I don't put a lot of money into this. But again, put your name on it if you want to do something and say and donate it to a, what, a museum in Moores, around this point, someplace. Well, like Dawn is working to get a museum Dawn going is trying now. To get the information. It should be things yes. like that should go to her so she can save them. New York Champlain Celebration. Uh, that's 1909 again. That's just another pamphlet that they put pamphlet. out at the time. Okay, just a, a little bit about the area. Now, this here is a little more interesting because now we see some individuals, and uh, this isn't that old. Now, this is 1935-36, and it's Ross's Point High School. In the back row is Marion Miro. That's starting from the left? Yes. Now okay. that's, that's Harold Miro's sister. All right. Um, Ralph Chilton. Um, Bernice Yell Gardafee. And Sheila Casey. Uh, in the front is Jenny Cronkright. That's Frank Hoig's wife. Cecile Bombardier. Louise Carpenter. Peggy Geddes. And Betty Strong. Now, Peggy Geddes uh, is married to my cousin, lives out in California now. That's one person I know in the picture. And the other one I owe an awful lot to is Ralph Chilton, the, the coach of that team standing up there. He hired me for the United States Customs in 1959. As a result of that, I was able to uh, uh, progress along the way, and uh, I think it was a, a rather a satisfying and a, a well-paid job, and I was able to raise my family here because of that man standing right there, and I owe him and his family an awful lot, and I'm glad to get his picture here on TV. Now, this is the men's team. Well, of course, that's right. He also went into uh, the girls, the men's team here. That was, this was 1936-37 team. Now, in the back, again, is Ralph Chilton, Bernard Jefferson, Kenneth Brothers. Now, Kenneth Brothers was killed during the, the war. And Stanley Oilier. And in the front is Francis Delarmier, Larry Cronin, Benny Carpenter, Harry Yell, and Henry Ashline. Are so, many of these people still living that you know of? Uh, Francis Delarmier isn't. Uh, Benny Carpenter isn't. I don't think Jay. Henry Ashline is. Bernard Jefferson isn't. Kenny Brothers isn't. Stanley Oyer, I'm not sure. Time to go by. That's, that's 50. Six years ago, mm -hmm. 55 years ago, uh, a picture of... Now that is uh, uh, at Marnes's, uh, where Marnes' Inn is, which is right across from Ralph's Park. 
Now this would have been north of what Sandy's Deli today. Um, that's just got an interesting sign. It's made like a pair of scissors. Uh, Taylor shop? That was the Taylor shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's on the lake side yeah. of Lake Street. And this is what is known as the Marnes that's Inn. That's the huh? Marnes is Inn. And that was two buildings. Uh, Dr. Wheeler bottled medicine in one building, and I don't know what was in the other building, but when Dr. Marnes took it, he put the two buildings together. And uh, there's still a space, uh, if you walked along there, downstairs, there's still a space between the two, but then they're connected upstairs. Who owns that now? Do you know, Peg? Uh, Lawrence Pelkey. Yeah, Lawrence Pelkey. Yeah. Here's another picture of the same... Now that's Dr. Same building? To the left, no, to the right, is Dr. Marnes' house. When he got married, he built that house, and him and his wife lived in that house, and they ran the inn. To the uh, mm -hmm. right? That's his house. That okay, was... now, that house to the right uh, later we got into the Alandria estate because Donna Racine lived there for a while. Uh, I believe that's the house between there and West Service Station. Mm -hmm. uh, Remy Rivers lived there for a long time, and too. And Donna and Al Racine lived there when we used to uh, be playing cards with families. We had been there before. And, uh, now, this is just to show you the size of some of the boats yeah. that used to pull up to Dr. Marnes' dock. I, used to, I told him not to take a picture of my boat. <laughs> Look at the size of that. That, that we still have big ones that today, so yeah. of course. You know, but I mean, in them days, for it to come into a private dock, yeah. it, you know, yeah. but that was the size of it. Then there were some very fancy uh, items on the lake here. Look at this. Now, uh, this is Dr. Marnes's also. Now, you notice the little uh, rounded bridge that goes over to where there's a cannon mm -hmm. that's on that, uh, there on that. That's probably where they shot the cannon from that hit the top of the school. Convent. No, no. We've been too much in the way. Oh. <laughs> it, we went right up Liberty Street, that cannonball. But that's changed a lot since then. You're looking across yeah. into Albert. There's four or five homes built out there in the point yeah. now. Now, if you show the two pictures together, you'll see how high that water is. Oh, yeah, there's the bridge. Uh, you can see the bridge here. And here's the bridge again. Or the cannon. That shows how high the water came. <laughs> It's quite a contrast. Yes, we haven't had that the last couple of three years in the lake. The lake's been low, but you can see the difference here. Probably spring. Whoops, excuse me. And here's another shot uh, again. That's the, just the, another view of, of it, you know. The, before it was remodeled, and the lake was used a lot more then, obviously, than it is now, yes. the, the lake shore. Yeah. You know, Rouse's Point, right here on that beautiful lake, and I don't think there's many places like this where you go down to the lake. But in them days, people didn't travel a lot. If they came here on vacation, they stayed their vacation and then left. Now, this is Dr. Marnes' garage. Um, that's where Sandy's Deli is today. Now, after it was uh, the garage, then Vic West had it as a showroom for cars, and he sold Pontiacs and Oldsmobiles. And then his father, Fred West, and Vic opened up a hardware store in there. Um, they made windows and doors and this sort of thing. My father worked upstairs in there. He was a carpenter, and he did a lot of the finish work up in there. Yep. Bernard Bulrus worked for them. He'd go around and take the jobs at the houses, but they'd make all the materials right there in that building. Mm -hmm. Now, if that, that is a gorgeous building, if it only looked like that today. Yes. All in little stone. It's uh, where uh, There's apartments up there now, all now around it's there. All, yeah. yeah, there's Sandy's on this side and a laundromat on the other side, and then all apartments upstairs. Okay, you're watching what's going on here. I'm Bob Ben, as we mentioned, and Peg Barcom. And it's uh, focus again this week is on Rouses Point, New York. Hope you'll come right back, because we're coming back. You're looking at the front of the Rouses Point High School and the Rouses Point Band. Yes. Now, the back row in there is uh, Wesley Gardefee, Orville Goodrow, Harry Landry, Dennis Tingman, Elton Strong, Arthur Delano, George Barney, Alec Goslin, Carson Hoig, Russell Phelan, David Strong, Fred Chevalier, Stanley Hill, and the leader is Fred Hudson. There's a lot of those people, are, several of them are still around yes. around this point. Yeah. 
hope you love it. seeing yourself out there, guys. And in the front is Gene Lovell Marlowe, Albert Morelli. Oh, we know who he is. Donald Spear, Paul Letourneau. Now, that's not Leo's twin. That was another Paul Letourneau that lived here at the same time. Alex Sartwell, Lauren Sweet, John Fournier, Roy Thompson, Paul Cooper, Morris Letourneau, Glenn Wilder, and Robert Strong. Now, Robert Strong went down in a plane during the Second War. He was never found. Do you have any idea the year of this picture, uh, Peg? Don't well, we can ask it. Albert Morelli. We he have to tell ask us. Albert. Uh, Albert will... will uh, he looks about 10 years old in that picture. Of course, he was just elected uh, one of our uh, consul persons, yeah. brand new in the consul, and uh, we welcome him there, and we nice seeing a picture here of uh, when he was active in the band. Now he makes noise, then he made music. Now that's the state dock in 1965. It was in real good shape, not like today. Uh, that's a load of scrap iron from the Rutland Railroad draw when they were taking the railroad out and that load was going to Burlington and they, they parked there at the... Now that's a lunch cart that, you saw that in a picture with the lady with the horse. That okay, yes we did, picture, yes. But, uh, their regular stand was on State Street right next to where the liquor store was, right across from the Myers building. And that was Joe Brothers owned the cart and his two helpers was Melvin Bowright and Alfred Gaines, but I don't know which is which. I know the, the first one with the top coat is Joe Brothers, but the other two, I, I don't know which one is Allie Gaines, okay, Dickie's now, father. I was going to say, that is his father or his brother. It is his, his father. father. When we were yes. doing this story on Gaines Marina, you remember we saw his picture up in the back, and mm -hmm. then his father had started there years ago, Alfred Gaines. Um, and, of course, here's a picture that I'm very familiar with. Now, that's the 9B Custom House. Uh, when they started that, uh, they were closer to the village, but they were sinking. It was so springy, the ground, and the, there that they, so they had to move up on that hill where they ended up building today. But I took that picture for when I was doing the Ross's Point book and almost got arrested. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I was standing in the front. I was, I was parked, and I was standing in the front taking the picture, and this officer come out, and he said, What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't you know you can't take a picture of a federal building? And he was having a fit. And I said, well, I could go up to the drugstore and buy a picture. <laughs> and he, no explanation. So Curly LaBombard was coming along. And I said to Curly, will you tell him who I am, that it's OK? And I left. So, but then I realized why. He was a new officer. And at that time, they were blowing up federal buildings. Oh, and okay. I think yeah. he probably thought, well, maybe she's getting a picture to set it up. You know? <laughs> so, All right. You know, when I used to travel and mention I was from Champlain, New York, uh, 30 years ago, uh, and that was right near Rouses Point, they always quoted the, and always talked about the Rouses Point baseball team because they had a team and throughout the area. There were some very w well known, excellent ball players on that team. Do you have any names on these, Ben? Oh, yes. Now, a lot of these pictures I got from Harry Laundry Jr. Um, he, him and I got together one day and we sorted out a whole mess of pictures he had, and he sold me a bunch of them. This is one. Uh, left to right again is Ernest Manette, Harry Laundrie Sr., Earl Christie, Dick Irving. I had those ball players. And Earl Christie is still around too. Um, Lucian Rackett, George Brothers, Harry Miro. Now that's Harold Miro's father. He was called Slats. I don't know why, but it was. Tom Weatherwax. Jimmy Hogan, Floyd Laundry, Albert Cooper. Now, Albert Cooper drowned. Uh, him and um, a couple other men drowned off the, the bridge not too many years ago. And Bill Mumley. In the front is Roy Rawson, Harry Laundry Jr., hmm. George Barney, and George Martin. Yeah, you know, you mentioned the nicknames. You don't have to have a reason for nicknames. There's no. a reason that many times it's just as well we don't know why they're called some of these I, nicknames. I sort of think the grandfather was Harry, too, and they, maybe that's why he had a nickname, because they were both Harry. Oh, yeah, when I was in the area, when I was in Line Mountain, when I'm down in Wilkesboro, Westport, they always talked about the Landrys, the Irvings, the Christies, 
and, and some of the others, but those were very well. Miro, yes, they were very, yes, very yeah. well known. Uh, now that's, that's the expense of the uh, ball team for 1912 to the village. Apparently the village paid the expense of the team. They sponsored it. That, that was just a breakdown. Apparently they, each year they had to make a breakdown of what their expenses mm -hmm. were, and that was just an expense sheet, but... They you know, good crowds, too. Huh? Yes. Oh, oh yes. Crowd. You see, they played where, well, not exactly where Delagar's is. It would be behind Delagar's building today mm -hmm. was the ball diamond. Yeah, when we used to play softball there, we got great crowds. And you know, up behind the school, they cut yeah. what, more than in half. These old teams, know? that was called the, the Rutland Lot, is yep. what we called that. It belonged to the railroad. And that's where we'd, uh, they, they played ball. But like you say, they always had good crowds. Yep, it shows on here visiting teams, uh, Mount Paid, they paid some, they paid uh, hat collections, $173. On the back of here is a certificate of promotion, 1921 from school. Stern. Elva Stearns, all right. right? Uh, the Stearns block that came down that, uh, where the fire department is, this was her father and mother's. Another thing, She's still living, this lady. You don't have to be a relative to keep something like this. <laughs> it's history. It's 70 years old. And if you didn't think we had snow back in uh, 1971, look at this picture. Now, I think that is about 1958, because that's my daughter standing there, and she was born in 1943. It says our yard, February 71. Yeah, don't mean anything. No, that's nothing else. Okay. Um, she was born in 43, so... The size were there. Now that year, they had to get the Air Force blower oh, yes. to open that street. That was the only street in the village that they couldn't open. It's just that northwest wind, and it plugged the street tight. So they had to come with the Air Force blower to open it up. <laughs> <laughs> and this. Uh... Now this is uh, at the end, east end of Pratt Street. That's where the field engineer had his office and part of that when they were redoing Route 9B. Right, right ahead of that ball field we were just talking about, yes. right there, yes. Now, this Alfred Opry, you have some Strax in Champlain. Well, this Alfred Opry would have been a grandfather, of a great-grandfather of them. I think Arnie Beale owns this building now, doesn't he? This no, George Ducharme. Okay, George, okay. George Ducharme owns it. All right. But he had a garage there, uh, which was, you know, there's some nice old cars, and this yep. one is just another one that shows the old car. Again, next to the building, uh, again. And the building on this side, which are we saying, left. The building on the left was a barber shop. And that again, I think there must have been seven different barbers over the years that there was always known to be a barber shop there. Mm -hmm. And next to that barber shop, it doesn't show in the picture, was a Green Gables Tea Room. And it was a nice little cozy restaurant with little tables you could go in and get tea and cookies or coffee and cookies, but it, it was just a nice little restaurant. There's always somebody that doesn't want his picture taken. And I think this is one of them right here. Now that, I don't know who that little boy is, <laughs> but I kept that picture for this plank sidewalk. Yes. Now, it shows it very well. Uh, the village went to cement in 1912. But that little boy is so cute. Yes, you know, and notice how they were dressed, too. That wasn't, I don't know if it was Sunday, but they were, they were all dressed up. <laughs> and this was a picture we, I think we've seen before. Yes, when we did the railroad, we showed that one. Mm -hmm. And I have since found out, um, of course, uh, Jim Monifo was doing a book on the Rosses Point Fire Department. And he had the picture also, but he had some names, which I didn't. Mm -hmm. And so we compared and got together. And, so uh, there, there, Arthur Kutcher okay. is on the horse. We didn't know who that was. And Harry Strack is the truck driver. And Bill Mumley is in the middle of the three men. Who are standing in the front yeah, of it. So we know them three. If you know anybody else in here, you've seen the picture. Let Peg know. We'll be glad to identify these people. Yes, or Jim Monifo. Or Monifo. <laughs> now these are just fire department things that I had. That, um, but the pink one is the, in your, your right hand, is the membership card of the firemen. I don't know what this one is. Uh, in my left hand here, the membership. Oh, left hand. All right. And then and this, this, this one is, is a uh, report of fire. They gave you that to put on your telephone so that it shined at night. The fire department distributed them to everybody so that you could call the, the fire department okay. if you had to. Right. The Constitution and the bylaws of the fire department. Yeah, they're also point. I don't know, it's dated, I think. Uh, 1951, as amended. And... Again, um, 
Main. Now this is just Main Street. It's just. Uh, I'm not sure where it is. It just shows another. Oh, that, is this Washington right over here? Washington Street right over here, probably. No, that's that's Myers Building. You see. Oh, it is. Okay. The tall one is Myers, and the little half one you see is the old liquor store that burned down on the corner of State. Okay. Nineteen forty-five graduating class. Yeah. Well, this is again Ross's Point High School. Uh, this is going to be well. We don't have to show eight boys at the back, left to the right. It's kind of a mixed-up picture, but I think people will be able to figure out which they are. There's Francis Cameron, Bobby Strong, Leon LaFountain, Raymond Sand, Dick Gaines. Oh, the the Marina Man. Jimmy Brennan, Harold Murrell and Reginald Hazen. Then in the middle, there's eight girls. Ruth Obrey, that's Laterno. Laterno now, the leader of the, cor of the choir. Glenna Muller, Margaret Dupra, Rita Boris, that's Roland LeBlanc, that's Rita LeBlanc's husband. Beatrice Jefferson, Wanda Wilder, Francis Roy, and Ermine Brown. In the front, there's eight more girls, Claire Susie, Teresa Bovin, Ann Roberts, Elizabeth Fulton, Shirley Gee, Louise Weatherwax, Mabel Barcombe, and Fern Sand. Great, great pictures. You didn't know you were going to have all your pictures on there, did you, you guys out there? Uh, here's a picture I don't recognize, City Market. Now that was called City Market. That was on State Street, and that was right where Cy Bernard lives today. It's his house, uh, almost across from the big laundry block. Um, yeah. Uh, now this is people that worked in that store. There's Adrian Obrey, Tony Blair, and Loretta Pilger. In the store, State Street. Well, I recognize the... Uh, that's just a fun picture. <laughs> yeah, I recognize this. Uh, now, that's Louis Barcombe, and he, for years, was the street cleaner. He had a little cart, and he'd go up and down the street. And we always called him the mayor of Ross's Point because he knew everything going on, what, where it was, when it was, and so on. So he, we called him Mayor Ross's Point. The middle one is Arthur Malinsky. And um, the other one is Nick Sepoyer. Now, if his name was Nicholas, or I don't know... The man on this end. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's well, what it is, but I know it's Nixie Poyer to us. I'm not very familiar with bars. I don't frequent bars much. I'm not a drinker, but I do know I go in and see Dick Laterno, and I believe that is the bar at the Holland Hotel. It, it's either Definitely. there or Entails. Entails had those glass bars did, too at one but time. It so looked I'm, very much. Like, and I know uh, Louis used to go a lot in Entails, so I'm not sure which and it is. And this end back here, I recognize the door. I think yeah, I think that well, is. It, uh, it probably is. All right, back onto the water, Rogers Point's famous water right, on the Lake that's, Champlain. That's one of the excursion boats that came here. There used to be a lot of them, but that's just one. They'd pick up people, take them on moonlight excursions uh, up the lake and back, or they'd take them shopping to Burlington or whatever. But that's just one of them. It gives you an idea of the size of them. Now that's Main Street again. And uh, I think that's the one with the... the yes, down... In the further corner, there's a street light. It's got four little globes and one big globe. Well, I've got that big globe that come off that light, and it's must be two feet at least, the top of it. You see? Uh huh. Yeah. Right. That I gave that to Don too, but I got that from one of the Jeffersons. Apparently, it had been stored upstairs, and when they moved out of there, uh, Phyllis. No, uh, so where is this looking? North. You're looking. That street light is in front of Myers. Okay, That's a all right. State okay. again. The this state is Harold Andres. Yes. Those yeah. trees kind of fool you in the main street. Yeah. Before we go on, we're going to go back into some baseball pictures. Before we do, we'll take a short break so uh, we can just get our thoughts together. You're watching uh, what's going on here. Thanks very much. It's on every Sunday night. And again, our guest is uh, Peg Barcombe with the story and pictures and the flavor of Rouses Point, New York. Getting a little more modern in our times here. Now we're getting, getting catching up on our dates. Another baseball picture. And who do we have here, Peg? Well, in the back is Bud Guerin. That's Andy Guerin's brother. Roy Rawson. 
Harry Laundrie Jr., Alonzola Valley, Dick Cooper, Charlie Gardafee, and then seated is Albert Cooper, Harold Miro, that's the one called Krabby Miro. Krabby Miro, yeah. I... Melvin Franklin, Paul Cooper, Harry Laundry Sr., and the mascot was Merrill Cooper. You know, as I look at here, we see Lonzo LaValle, of course, great pitcher in his time, and he lives in Cooperville. He's in Florida right now, but talking recently with Don Rainville, and Don used to play with and against Moon LaValle, and I want to tell you, Don, we got Moon on here. We don't have your picture. By golly, you weren't in this team. Um, and of course, Don Rainville living on Route 9, uh, in the old uh, Bill LeClaire and Nancy's house there, and uh, was the won the prize for the best decorated house out in the in the town area. And congratulations to he and his wife on that. Now this is that that big porch is on the Holland House before it was built the last time, and that's uh, State Street. And that tree is Leo Laterno and I both when we did video before we both showed that tree. Um, it's a horse chestnut tree, and it was right in front of what Chauvin's today. That was Dr. Newton's drugstore, you see. And we used to collect the horse chestnuts, and uh, us girls would make holes through them and make necklaces, and the boys would make pipes. They'd stick a, a stick in them and make pipes. And then, of course, the other boys would grab them and use like a snowball fight, only they'd use horse chestnuts. Oh, and if you got yeah. hit with one of them, you knew it. Well, I guess... Now, that's laying the water lines in Ross's Point. It looks like Let's that... See. Let's see. No, it isn't. No. No, no I'm I... sorry. Th this is part of the parade during World War I to raise money for uh, war bonds. And they, they went through, and then they would go around and try to collect uh, money. Mm -hmm. to... This is right next to the park again, I take it. Yes, right? yes. And here's another uh, picture of the same yeah. vintage... Uh, some more people in that parade. You can see the uniforms of World War I. And uh, obviously, here's another. That's the armored car. And notice it's got solid rubber tires in that car. That's right in front of Harold Laundry's. Just like you take pictures today of the 4th of mm -hmm. July uh, parades we have, you know. This one. Uh, another. Now this one, the front row, that was a, in the parade also, but in the front row to the left is Warren Parmer. Now he's in Cedar Hedge right now, but that was, he was in that picture. In the second row to the right is Ernest Manette. Now to him, he was Brownie Manette to all of us. And you got, yes, yeah, sir? yeah. In that one, the leader of that was Charles Govroll. He was in the Spanish-American War. And he owned the Holland House at one time. Okay, and... Um, now that's Ross's Points Fire Department. Now that's a picture Warren Palmer loaned me, and I had it copied too. Um, Jim Monifo is uh, using that in his book, and I'm sure he's got some names. I don't have any names for that picture. But uh, when the book comes out, I'm sure we'll have the names. Nice old picture. Now the building in that picture... Uh, is where the fire station, kept, they kept the fire truck. And when they built the new station, Vic West moved that building to the north, just the width of the building to the north, and he's made apartments out of it. Oh, all right. That's where the, now here's a great old picture, and when we think of this picture, we see this picture, we, we think of uh, the Trayan family, because I recall uh, uh, Emery Trayan and his family, uh, what do we call it, put up the uh, frame that building, yeah. right? We they, talked with they framed it, and then uh, Arthur Kutcher finished it himself, and that was his hotel. Um, he ran it uh, mostly for railroad people. They catered a lot to the railroad because he was right side of that. That would be just west of the railroad tracks on Pratt Street. Um, that, that's where they had that. And this was one of his, uh, well, that he passed out, I suppose, when people went in, but notice how much it costs. At the bottom. Rate $2 per day. <laughs> Stay at the hotel. But I, that was a nice hotel, you know, and it was right close to the tracks mm -hmm. and everything, so. Nice memorabilia item. Yeah. On the back of here, it, it gives the distances from Rouse's Point, east, south, west, north, and northwest. Uh, gives about a 
25 or 30 locations where you could go. Now, here's a well-decorated uh, house. Now, again, that's the decorations for 199. Almost every building was decorated right up to the rooftops. Now, this mm -hmm. was Dr. Letourneau's house. It's still there. It's on the corner, the north north corner of State. Pratt and Lake, right Northwest. across the Grand Union on yes. that sort of a corner and there. I guess that's Dick Letourneau's grandfather. Yes. D D Dr. Letourneau's house. Yeah. They called Dick's father Doc. And I never knew yeah. why. He wasn't a doctor, but his dad was, yeah. so Dick Letourneau's grandfather. And uh, old Dr. Letourneau, uh, my mother we used to go with him as a midwife uh, when he'd go around deliver babies. Um, he was well known. And then um, Dick's father had a little store in the front there. And when we'd go home from school, we used to stop in there and buy penny candy. Mm -hmm. Then they had a little restaurant. I guess they, they sold yeah. coffee and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. donuts and things. And here's one I don't recognize. I guess it's on Lake uh, Street. This is State Street, or Montgomery Street. This is the lake house. This is Earl Merchant's home today. Uh, that's just east of Delagar's second okay. building. Now okay. they built another one. Uh, that was the lake house, and they rented rooms, and they catered to fishing parties. That was the biggest thing they did. Uh, it was run by some, the last people that ran it like that were Joneses, uh, their name, and they had the last ferry uh, that, that uh, was from in front of there. Was... And if you ever wondered whether when they have these fishing trips, <laughs> if they catch any fish, uh, I think she brought this <laughs> along. That's a good day's catch. Yeah. Uh, tourists uh, at the lake house here on the lake, right? Yeah. I was reading this in the back of your bag. Look at the fish. And the signs on the one that you had of the hotel, there's a sign on the corner and it shows Pap's Blue Ribbon, Schlitz, Uncle Sam Ale, and Monroe Beer. Up here in the corner? Uh, right on, on, on the corner yes, of the building right, the right there. Yes. But now that, that was a pretty good choice. Right. Uncle Sam Ale. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, people would like to have some of those bottles so they would collect. And here's yeah. right, right on the corner of, uh, now this is the H.L. Clark uh, buildings. Now this, this uh, one you see, that, that's lined with tin, um, sided with tin. And they, there was this H.L. Clark built where Jackie's ceramics, the big building, and he built this for his wife. She had a hat shop. And uh, she had a hat shop there and then apartment upstairs and Leo Gagne, as you know, lived oh, yeah, my for uncle. years and Absolutely. years. That's where Foxy's father and, uh, was, was raised and my aunt and uncle uh, right there. I have to there. tell you another story about your aunt. Um, I worked for her uh, after school. I'd go and dust and do little things like that when I was a teenager. And Harold Laundry was painting that apartment one day. And she had a beautiful piano. And she said to Harold, how would that piano look painted white? Harold says, are you crazy? She says, no. She took everything off the piano, and Harold Laundrie painted her piano white. <laughs> you know, and then Harold Laundrie's brother married one of my sisters. Yes. And yes, then this George. front bedroom up here, there was a bedroom in the front, and Foxy's father used to have all kinds of uh, uh, movie pictures, uh, pictures of uh, And then at, at the uh, downstairs in that, that same building, again, the A.M.P. store was there. And then after the AMP, there was the park restaurant. And then the last people in the bottom there was um, a sporting goods store that was all in that same mm. building. Yes, and then there was a restaurant, like you say, the Munnix, I think. Yeah, they had the park there. restaurant. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll uh, take a short break here before we get into these pictures of younger students that are probably still in Rouse's Point. We want to point these out to you here. I recognize some of these faces, but you're watching what's going on here. Hometown Cables version of uh, of what calvin 60 minutes or something i don't know so we're uh, uh on every sunday night and sunday during the day at 1 15 4 30 8 p.m uh, midnight again 8 the following morning that's sundays about every day the same hours there's programs on here school board meetings town board meetings village board meetings anything of any importance in the area parades uh school functions sports everything Tune in. Tune in often. If you don't stay and watch it all, at least find out what's going to be on that night. You'll be surprised. You'll see members of your family. Uh, you'll see yourself. You'll see your friends and relatives. Tune in regularly and remember, it can't be done without your becoming a patron. This lady's name is on there uh, as a patron. She's one of the first ones on every time. She likes Hometown Cable, and I hope you do too. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
<clears throat> we want to remind you again that uh, if you've got pictures, you don't have to have as many as Peg does. Uh, I don't know if anybody else does have as many like this, but if you have pictures of your community, any of our community here in the New Channels area, and you'd like to uh, talk with me on TV and show me what it was. There's a lot of good pictures up around Morris Forks. Altona's had some great places. Shay Z, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Edith Moss, Edith Sullivan Moss got some nice pictures. And a lot people like that. I'd like to get you on and show you your, the pictures from there. Uh, it just so happens that uh, Peg's got a lot of these. She's very willing. And I, when, once I can tease her into talking here, I have an awful job keeping her going like this, don't I, Peg? Yep. <laughs> you <laughs> bet your match. Ah, listen, it's great. Yeah, I don't have to do much except kind of uh, control that we move the pictures around here. She, she's uh, just great. and We've enjoyed every time we've had her on. And uh, we have other things for Peg in the future, too. Thanks for watching Hometown Cable. Again, we're back to the a picture showing the hardware store and that picture of that building where my aunt lived and then the park, and you're going to tell us about the hardware store? Yes, where the hardware store is, I said, H.L. Clark built that, and he built the little one for his wife. Well, he had a hardware store there. After he went out, it was Chilton Hardware. Then it was the Grand Union. Grand Union had that whole building. And then it was Geddes Hardware. Then Delagars used it, mm -hmm. and now it's Jackie's Ceramics. I think that's closed too, but that was the last one that was in there then was Jackie's Ceramics. Do you know anywhere else except right in your notes there where that information is in one place of no. what was in that building? No. You know, I've just been appointed to a committee here in Champlain searching on yes. different buildings. And that's what, that that's what should be done, all right? Yeah, I'm 21. And that's what should be done, you know, yes, with this yes. thing. And you should put that in print and you say, here, this building, and kind of make a little history of that because that's going to disappear. Uh, we're going to have it on tape here, but I don't know how many years they'll be using VHS mm -hmm. tape, but sometime maybe in the future this can be transferred to another kind of media. Who would have thought of these kind of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, of cameras like this uh, even uh, 20 years ago, yeah. it didn't even have to possible. I've always uh, went around and tried, to, even the buildings that are there today, and tried to take a picture of them, uh, like I did all the stone houses within the town. Uh, you'd be surprised how many stone houses mm -hmm. there are. But uh, I started that when they tore down the school um, at the Leggett Road. I thought, well, no, that's gone. So who will know there was a school there? It's yep. gone now, and you'd never yep. know that was a school there. Nope. But uh, as you say, if it's done while the people are here to tell you that, no, years to come, we're going to be all gone, mm -hmm. and then they can just add to it. You know, you mentioned that, and I've got some pictures of that school being torn down because my son-in-law is the one that tore it down. They wanted it out of there, and they gave him the stone. He worked there many a day. Big stones, had them drawn over to um, uh, my house now, his then on uh, South Street, and he was going to make an addition. Never did, so he had to pay somebody to take him away after that. So they made, and he, but he got all the wood pillars, and here's the class. We don't have a year on this. It's about 1950. All right. Watch for yourself, folks, because you're in this picture. <laughs> in the back is Charles St. John, Robert Yinkst, Clifford Martin. Then the next one, I don't know. Then Clifford Martin, Noel Favreau. That's Noel Favreau Sr., too. Jack Yinks. Now, these Yinks boys were twins. Then the second road down is Robert Entail, George Hanfield, Rainey Entail. Richard, then the next one I don't know. Then Richard Barcombe, Ken Duffy, and in the front is Jane LaBombard, Gloria Clark, Silva Mary Marnes, and the next girl is a Wells, but I don't know her first name. Linda Duffy, Ruth Barcombe, and Mary Ann Ethier. That's right here in this picture. And uh, of course, Noel Favreau today is uh, from that large family. He's at the uh, trans border. Uh, now, this is an eighth grade graduation at St. Pat's. Again, we don't have a year, but you can probably uh, tell from who some of these people who they are. Uh, in the back is Father Lalone, Father Charlin, and Father Cleary. In the back row is Loyal Sterling, John Motley. Now, John Motley uh, went overseas, and he came back, went through all this. He came back, and he was home one week, and he got killed in a car in, in uh, New York City. He walked in the street, and he got killed. Wow. Romeo. 
57? 57, oh. See, Calvin knew. Calvin knows this. Um, Romeo Boyer, Alan Nautel, Robert Lefebvre, and Gary Mumley. Second row down, Pat Blair, Ruth Barcombe, Valerie Dagenau. Is there Sylvia Marnes in there between uh, that you wrote and listed there, probably? Yes, yeah, Sylvia Marnes is well, in between. I, okay. I, I forgot. Okay. Her. All right. Ruth Barcombe. Yeah. Valerie Dagenau, Teresa Guerin, and Isla Mossy. And in the front is Madeline Hogue. Rainy Antail, Peter Lefebvre, and Betty Guerin. In that picture right there, that is uh, some of our people from Rouse's Point. The Frontier House. Now that's another one I borrowed from Harold Miro and had copied. Um, that's the Stearns, we knew as the Stearns' block. This is where the fire station is, that empty lot between the fire okay, station. Okay, that's gone. Yes, the fireman took it down, mm -hmm. but that's where that was, and it had been a hotel in different years. Nice porches. Now here we got some construction. That's laying the water line. There we go. They got very narrow at this end forms, and they're putting the water line in. Now I have no idea what year that is, but that's what they were doing. So it's probably in the 30s or something. You right. mentioned that back here, raised appliance building, I guess, is right in that. Area. Yeah, it's in that And picture. Frank uh, Party sitting on the store step. Mrs. Party. Mrs. Party. Yeah. And a lot of construction. And the trees, notice the trees on Main Street or Lake Street in Rouses Point, no longer there. And it looks like, like a dirt street. Now that's State Street, and that's a laundry's uh, block that you see that's, that burned, the okay. Menard block yes. that's there now. And that house is Jenny Hoig's house. Um, they, they made that, she used to like to look outdoors and she couldn't see up or down so they built that window on the top so she could look to the lake or look up to State Street. They built that, that little, she could look all three directions. But see, it was only dirt street, yep. there was no... Yeah, and that was right, uh, right behind the Holland Hotel. Yeah. That yeah. building. That building is still there, I think it's a barb or something. That's very clever to, uh, to have done that, for her to sit there. Sure, she was a... That dog yeah. is dead, yes. She was a seamstress. <laughs> And, of course, that gave her a lot more light, too. Right. Now, this looks like this might have been a, an occupation. Now, this um, was um, harvesting ice, and this was an ice pond. Now, they've already taken the cakes out of that pond, so you're looking at the water. Now, um, there's a skid in the background. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a skid, and they would put the uh, ice blocks on that skid and skid them up into a truck, and then the truck would take them to the ice house. Now, the man in the overcoat, is uh, he was the boss. He always had the contracts. That was Bill Mumley. And the, the further man on the left is my father. Uh, I bought this as a postcard, and when I see how interesting it was, I had it blown up. And um, um, this Bill Mumley came one morning, and of course a pond freezes over, and they put Christmas trees around the pond until it's good again so they don't go in it. Well, they had forgot to put Christmas trees, and Mr. Mumley backed his truck up, and he went right into the <laughs> pond from the day before. And there was a man working for him, a Frank Ashline, and uh, Mr. Mumley jumped. He didn't go in. He jumped. The truck went down. And uh, Mr. Ashline says, uh, Bill, did you remember to shut the motor off? <laughs> he was so mad he could have killed him. <laughs> they pulled the truck out, but it was, but it was, uh, that was a big thing, the ice uh, business. Yep. You know. 1930s. Uh, yeah. You know, that didn't have all those refrigerators. Here's a popular picture, uh, a type of a picture that uh, I've seen. I don't know how this particular now one. Now, that's just like uh, today. That was U.S. Marshals selling seized cars. But, of course, that was prohibition, and they, they seized them for uh, bringing in liquor. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were having a sale in front of the Custom House, which is the Myers Building. And this is another, yep. another view of it. Um, they got a lot of they got a lot of people. Place where they were selling cars. Yep. Uh, on that original picture, just off to the right of the picture is the parking lot for the Grand Union. If you're in Rouse's Point, right here, you get an idea where we're talking about. And here's another picture. This is on a postcard. The second one. Yeah. And 
Now this is just a bad accident. Um, it was 1941 and it was on Champlain Street and my brother-in-law was killed in that car and the driver, my other brother-in-law, walked away without even a scratch. And another now, shot uh, of the car. Mike Costello it was in Champlain. The photographer took these pictures and gave them to us. But to think that a car could be demolished like that and the driver get up and walk away. Yeah. Uh, um, Fred Barcombe was killed and Arson Barcombe was the one that was okay. And you were talking earlier, Peg, you didn't tell us that your maiden name was Bedard? My maiden name is Maskell. Maskell, excuse me. My stepfather is Bedard. I beg your pardon. I, I uh, had a stepfather since I was about two years old, so I'm Bedard. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I only use Maskell if I have to sign something. Okay, now uh, here's a picture. Now to get back to that accident pardon, before we go yes. any further, you don't have to show it. Okay. But, um, Willis Parsons was right behind their car coming from Champlain. And the first thing they said, well, was he was speeding. That's how come that accident. But Mr. Parsons stopped, and he told the troopers, he said, I followed them from Champlain, and no way was that car speeding. And all they could lay it to, they were working on the telephone lines, and they had one of those white canvas um, windbreaker things up on the pole, and it sort of was over the road, and there was a lot of leaves. It was in the fall, and they kind of thought maybe that surprised him that white or they thought it was mm -hmm. I, I don't know what and mm -hmm. anyway he put his brakes on and he wrapped right around that tree but mr parsons went and swore under oath that they were not going mm -hmm. fast that he had come right behind him in case you're wondering yes uh, willis parsons was our old parsons father was the funeral director in yeah. champlain at that time probably and this says some champion iga bowlers may the 6 1954. Yeah. I didn't, their, their uh, names are the on names the bottom are, of it. If you can freeze so this, I, Calvin, I'll see what I can read off here. Uh, on the, in the back, left to right, are Earl Christie, Roger LeBlanc, Roland LeBlanc, Johnny Ledoux, Bernard Jefferson, first row, kneeling, Pete LeBlanc, Edgy DeMars, and Bob LeBlanc. Well, <laughs> names we recognize every day. And on the back... Uh, is a picture of George McNally, Mrs. Harold Taylor, and Walter Connolly. Don't remember what this is for, what it's all about, but it's uh, a collection of toys that you can give them to the, the, the children, I guess. The Rogers Point children sponsored by the uh, Christmas Community Council. We were just talking early. That's the George McNally that had the, yes. the uh, jewelry, jewelry store. store and ran a taxi in Rouse's Point. It's been a long time yeah. since you've had a taxi in Rouse's Point. Yes, yes. Well, this is a... Now that's the Newton block. That is just south of Chauvin's. Uh, that's where the co-op was. Yes, the where the co-op co right? was, yes. Montgomery Ward's mm -hmm. been in there and co-op has been in there. has been Rosemeyer and Dan's were in there. Geddes was in there. There's, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of, of businesses in there. But that was more to show you the decorations again at 1909. They, how they even had them on the top stories. Right. Now this is something that was very popular after the war, and then uh, the one in Champlain just disappeared. Yes. We looked for it for our reunion, disappeared. I had wished that I had a better picture, but that was the best I had. Now that was, as you say, the World War II honor roll. Andrew Weston paid for the to have it built. Uh, the Legion, post 912 Ross's Point, sponsored it. Uh, it was designed and built by Fred West. That's Vic West's father. Um, when they took it down, they gave the, it was like wooden plates that were screwed on with each one's name. Well, they took those off and they gave them to each man that wanted them, but it was just wood. Mm -hmm. But I think why they took it down, I think probably it started to deteriorate. Where was it? Uh, on library lawn. Uh, okay. Yeah, on the south side yeah. of the door. Uh, and here we have a bunch of workers. Now, those are just cute kids. I have no idea who they are, but I know they're Ross's Point because I borrowed them from the same bunch of pictures. I think the, what's happening here, we're closing out these pictures here, is with uh, cute kids and cute, cuter grown-ups. So we start out with the cute kids, and then we have a very cute <laughs> grown-up right here uh, at his marina, Dick Gaines. Dick, you, I, I'm sure you can appreciate my kidding you here. We had a great time. We did the show on... Uh, uh, Gaines's Marina. We enjoyed that very much and had a lot of good comments about that and uh, we played ball back with Dick back in the early 50s and 
Uh, I guess we've got a few more pictures here, but that's uh, Dick Gaines uh, in Rouse's Point. Now this is um, Harry McManus and I in 1983 when we had had the uh, Rouse and Oliver commissions restored and now they're in the vault but they've been put on acid proof paper and all so that now they're preserved that anybody can see them and they're because mm -hmm. one is uh, signed by John Hancock which you know is uh, mm -hmm. let's take a short break while we get into these last six or seven pictures and uh, we'll coming back we want to remind you you're watching uh, what's going on here Peg Barcom our guest today Calvin with the camera and Bob Ben with the uh, mic here or standing sitting here and enjoying it very much uh, and I'm not seeing the pictures I'm hearing them from seeing them from behind I'll be able to watch this myself, and we hope you enjoyed this kind of show. And if, why don't you can uh, make an offer to show us your pictures of uh, various villages around the area. Okay, we're back at the park. Uh, now, this was 1983. Uh, as the picture you just saw with the commissions, this was the dedication of Rouse Park. Uh, for 1983, we did all these things. We dedicated Rouse Park, and uh, uh, that was Mickey Gallagher that was our guest speaker. And of course, he's a native Rouse's Pointer, and he was the WCAX news anchor man, and he died not too long after we had this picture taken. Now, Mayor McManus uh, is in that picture, and Dick Favreau, who is one of the trustees, and um, what's his name? He was another one of the trustees. Willette. Willette. Yes. Mitch, Willette. Mitch Willette. I'm sorry. And me, and then that's Ron Wood. He entertained. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were dedicating the park there. That building, you can see the back, is the side of that building that you mentioned before. With the tin siding. With the tin yes. siding next to the hardware store. That's yeah. uh, the side of it. That's the back part. And that's the... Yeah. And this is Mayor McManus and I that same day where... Uh, we were down at the rec center and uh, we had a cake. This was a celebration for the 200th year of the uh, founding of the village. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just Nelly Chevalier was painting, repainting the signs. I went to the board and asked if we could have the signs repainted and there wasn't any money. So I paid her myself and she painted the signs for me. Were you village historian then? Yes. Okay. I was chairman for the bicentennial, chairman of the committee for the bicentennial too. Kind of forget here between 83 and 88 when, the, when that Rouse celebration, yes. uh, another great thing not only for uh, the Rouses but for the village of Rouses Point. The only thing wrong with that whole weekend as you know, the heat? it was the heat, it was just too hot and uh, a lot of people were, were in town. Now that's Mr. Albert Carrier. Um, he. When we were uh, soliciting, I solicited everything for the park, for Rouse Park and all. We didn't ask the village for any money. And Mr. Carrier called and asked if he could do something. And I said, well, what do you want to do? And he said, well, would it be possible for me to restore the desk and chair that he used as village clerk for 50 years? And so the village agreed, and he had it done. And he's making out a check for $600 in the library for the restoring of the chair and the desk. Did he work at Irish or something? Uh, where, no. No, what did no, he, he was a railroad man. Railroad. Now, he, of course, is the Albert Carrier Apartments. Uh, yes. Just, uh, so the west, here is you know, Albert Carrier. Near the, near the this uh, is the opening. He's in that picture, too. This is the, that's he with the hat. opening of the Carrier Apartments. Um, now... He, uh, nice smile. Who's in there? Uh, that's Mayor Oral Parsons, the village of Champlain, and Supervisor Leo Laterno, town of Champlain, Debbie Wells, who was the administrator for the apartments, Mr. Carrier, and Mayor Ross's Point, Harry McManus. Mm -hmm. That was at the ribbon cutting for the, the, the things. Should point out though, he didn't build them, they're just named after yes, him. Yes, 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 they were named uh, after him, and he's. He is still living. He lives at his son John's in uh, Maryland. Oh, he is still he's living. He's still yeah. living. I think it's 97 he's going to be in May. 97 <laughs> or 98. Yeah, and because he was village clerk, I guess, for 50, 50 years, years, they decided to name yes, the apartments after yes. him. Uh, they had a lot of nominees, uh, but they, they decided that, and I, and I was go I talked to Paul Seiden, the builder, into deciding to have this ceremony while Mr. Carrier was here to know that they did it. Mm -hmm. So we set it up and uh, we had an open house and, and we did it. This is just, this is a well that is on Maple Street and it's behind the George Ducharme house. 
and I always thought that was so pretty. I went in that yard one day, took a picture of it. So if you see someone in your backyard taking a picture, <laughs> before you call the cops, ask if it's Peg Barkham. It could very well be Peg Barkham or Calvin with the camera, with the, with the video camera taking it. I won't be there because I only talk. I don't take many pictures. Now this is the groundbreaking for Cedar Hedge Nursing Home. That's the Pollux. That was 1983. A nice addition to our community here in Rouses yes, Point. Yes, yes, yes. And this was the first year of the Parade of Toys, which was another one of my ideas. Um, and it's, it's growing every year. It's getting great. It's, it's really caught on, and even the adults uh, come to the parade with a toy and, and walk down to the park, and then they always have hot chocolate and cookies, and uh, the choir sings. And this year they had the junior choir. And uh, it's really caught on, so mm -hmm. it's, it's nice. I don't take my toys out of the house, uh, uh, Pegger. I'd be well, there. Even Mayor O'Neill came with a toy the oh, first he did. year. <laughs> and Mrs. Edgerton and a lot of them. So that was nice. That's Shazy Hardware. Again, now you see this is new. New building. But it's not going to be new for too long. Exactly. And that's a very well-known area where they built that yes. because of the Rutland Railroad yes. building. That's and then the site where the, the press was. The lumber yard behind, right, uh, years yeah. ago. Mall Mallard. Millard. 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 Now we're up to our famous Rouse reunion, and we'll close out with that. Now this was the welcoming committee. There's Mark Berry that was the master of ceremonies, and then me, and then Joe Bailey was representing Leo Letourneau as the town, and Reverend Rouse from Alabama, um, and uh, Chris Artloff, Assemblyman Chris Artloff, and then the mayor at that time, Ed Portugal. And this picture was not taken by Peg, it was sent to her by Richard Rouse of Nashville, Minnesota. Yes. A Rouse, one of the Rouses. Great day, it was awfully warm in there. <laughs> and that was the veterans, the veterans called me and asked if I would like them to have a ceremony that same weekend to dedicate the bridge, and I was tickled to death. Uh, it made one more event, and uh, I was instrumental in getting the national commander to come, and there's two state commanders, and there's veterans from Vermont and Canada and New York State, plus a lot of Rouse veterans that brought their caps and mm -hmm. had their caps on in the crowd. But it was really a very impressive ceremony. Um, there was no politics talked. Uh, that was an understanding that we didn't want politics, and there wasn't. It was strictly military, and it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those Rouses still talk about, they showed that tape at their uh, Legion meetings and Veterans of Foreign Wars meetings that they've showed that ceremony, and everyone mm -hmm. said, you know, how great it was. They yep. did a terrific job. And this picture was taken by Shan Moore of the North Countryman. I was taking some pictures for Peg with my video camera, and uh, I took the whole performance for about 25 minutes without my mic <laughs> and I had great pictures with no sound and but it just so happened that uh, our, my counterpart there uh, Calvin was there with his camera and I used his sound uh, with my pictures and I didn't have anything up real close so I didn't have to match the mouth with the sound but it, it, it sufficed and uh, I now thank him again the, for that. That was the dedicating of the new Korean Veterans Memorial Bridge and there was a plaque for New York side and a plaque for Vermont side. Mm -hmm. Um, so they, they were both on her. And this is the bridge. Of course, I, I must admit, I haven't heard it called the Korean Veterans Bridge many times. It's the Rouses, still the Rouses Point Bridge. To us, it's the new bridge. It's the new bridge, <laughs> yes. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing, it's a great addition because when you go across there, there's no slowing down and it's so, uh, you don't feel like you're leaving the country anymore like you used to and have to pay you to come back. You don't have to, to set in 90 degree no. temperature until they let no. a bolt through. Exactly. No, it's a great addition. It's a great idea. And I'd like to thank uh, uh, Mark Berry and a couple others, if I can think of the names, who said it should be free of charge. And uh, I remember, and, and it, it was a, a bad thing, but when everybody was invited, one person that didn't get invited was Mark Berry. They just forgot about him yes. at that day. And uh, th th what an oversight. Well, it was, it was sort of a, a mixed up. Yes, uh, it anyway, was. That's why our boys put on this and really did it right. 
because there was a lot of, of disappointment at the way they did it out on the bridge. So this really made up for it. We had the yeah. Vermonters here and everything in it. This made up for it. Now this is just one of the Rouses that came to the reunion and he came from California and he's in a wheelchair and he wasn't going to miss it. So they came. And they've been back, some of them, right? Yes. They, uh, and I'm still hearing from some. I hear from two or three of them this year. I was very pleased to hear from one. I had a one. family this year from New Zealand that wasn't able to come, but they came this year. So we're still, you know, there's... Still... Yeah. I and this remember is him. our last one, and I'll always be grateful to Larry Paquette. I wanted him to come and, and give out the resolutions, and he had just come home from the hospital a short time earlier, and he wasn't sure if he could do it. But when I looked up and saw him walking in the park, I was happy. And so he, he gave the resolutions for the Rouse family and uh, the town and the village. Um, so. And you'll notice that uh, the urn, I think, is on top of this. Yes. Well, uh, it's still covered up there. It's that still was... covered. It hasn't been uh, uh, unveiled yet. That blue on top of the uh, uh, fountain was given by the, the, Rouses, the Rouses for something to remember the family here in Rouse's Point because that had been stolen or broken it, years ago, years off, right? Ago, yes. And they did, did do that, and that was a very uh, com uh, funny presentation by the Rouse that talked. Yes. He did a great job. Alan Rouse. Uh, Alan was, did a great yes. job. You've been watching Hometown Cable again, and we thank you for it. I think that's about all we'll have on this segment of uh, uh, what's going on here for this Sunday. And uh, in a if not next Sunday, the, uh, one of these approaching Sundays, we're going to be talking with Peg again. There's a lot more items here in the room we're going to go do now, and we'll be showing them to you later. Uh, memorabilia now that, uh, not as many pictures, but various signs, posters, um, bottles, a lot of things that have books written by people here in the area. We want to show you those. And uh, Peg, thank you very, very much for all the time that I know. Uh, if I didn't know, you told me how many hours you put in here. She put in over 25 hours preparing to come here. She doesn't come unprepared. And, and I feel kind of uh, out of place sometimes asking Peg to do this because she works so hard. She wants to do it so well. And she did that with the railroads, and we're still hearing about it. And you did a, a great job again, Peg. And I think you've covered everything. Uh, if you hadn't, you'd have done it ahead of time, I know. And uh, thank you very much for watching Hometown Cable. If you want to do your part to keep this kind of a program on, uh, I didn't get paid, she didn't get paid, Java's not getting paid too much back there. Why don't you become a patron? Send $12 or more to Box 180, Hometown Cable. Uh, Ridge Road, Champlain, New York, 12919. And it's just as easy to write 20 as it is to write 12 for $12. Send $20 or so. And if nothing else, say, you, you want to send this a little extra, or you want to send something because you like watching what's going on here, and you particularly like to watch Peg Barkham and all the work she's doing here for us. Thanks very much for watching. It's on five times every Sunday.